for me. It is a place where the truth should be kept. The arts and music scene really shows what people are about. Share what's going on here in York. It makes you feel like a family. Local art has a face that most people can relate to. Our community up here that sticks together. Art is art. Great potential with great artists, poets, singers, writers, directors, filmmakers. It's fantastic. Everyone has a story to tell. That moment, you have to capture that moment and share it with the rest of the world. Showing something that maybe has not been seen before. Without art, what good is life? I am art. I've been art ever since I was born. It really adds a great deal to our community. We don't really need art to exist, but you need art to live. Culture in Maine is important, and I think playing out is important, and playing open mics and playing wherever you can play. It's all about us all checking in with each other.
Now we're here with Jeff from Toss and Found Art. Um, Jeff's a little unique in what he does. He likes to find discarded pieces of material and put them back together in a repurposeful fashion. Um, how did you get into this? Um, well, I've been fabricating pretty much my entire life as far as building Jeeps and everything. I go to these scrap yards and I see stuff that kind of reminded me of stuff. I could almost see art in some of the scrap I saw. So I just started putting stuff together and people started liking it and asking me to make more and it's evolving from there. Okay. Well, it's something as... Uh as simple as spoons and knives, you turn into this awesome uh, raven mm -hmm. um, right here in front of us. Uh, where do you even get the idea? Do you have the idea before you make it or as you're doing it? Originally, he was going to be a rooster. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and then uh, as I started making him, uh, I started seeing a crow and then uh, evolved into the raven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, it's really great. Um, it definitely takes a lot of time and effort. How big do some of your pieces get? Um, I have like, uh, I have two life-size, uh, person sculptures right now. Okay. And one's going to be unveiled this spring and, uh, the other one's, um, it's up, up in Gettysburg right now. Okay. Uh, and I know for this show, you're going to be unveiling, uh, a four foot sculpture. Um, what's the name of it? It's, uh, it's named Zargon. It's Argon. A, it's a dragon. It's kind of like a Chinese dragon, but it's, it's also a, a mailbox post. Okay. So, uh, okay. be able to put a mailbox on his tail. <laughs> okay, okay. And, and what gave you the idea for that? Again, just something you, you just slowly start evolving with and, and it comes alive as you do it? Yeah, I've, I've, made, a, I've made a few small dragon heads and then I kind of wanted to make um, make a mailbox post w with a dragon. So, um, okay. uh, I, th I, think, I think you might have a picture of it. But yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, now, you're welding this, or so you're MIG welding? MIG welding, uh, arc welding. Okay, okay. Yeah, doing a lot of cutting, a lot of bending. Yeah, and you do this all at your house? Yeah, I have a shop in my shop in my garage. Okay. And actually, that's a, that's a running man. I, that's the one that's not unveiled yet. Yeah, that, that is a, a, a tremendous piece. That really is uh, all the gears. And and that's made almost entirely out of bike, bicycle parts. Really? Yeah. And it, it, the ironic part is that he's running. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> I love it. I really do. Uh, how long does it take for you to do a full figure like that? Uh, that one, uh, I didn't even keep track of the hours, but it took it took several months months okay. to finish that. Okay, I can definitely see the work in it. Mm -hmm. So, what got you involved in doing art in the first place? Um, I, I was always into art. Um, I got kicked out of art when I was in high school um, for not doing exactly what they wanted me to do. Okay, but um, I've always kind of kind of had the art background and and wanted to do stuff more more into art, but okay, I've almost entirely self taught. Nothing wrong with that at all, though. Yeah. And now you fabricate all this at your house. Yes. So you basically have a fabrication shop. Is that in a, a garage, I, w I would assume? Yeah, or? it used to be a garage. It used to be a garage, <laughs> and now it's your art studio, yeah. right? Yeah. That's great. Do you do anything else? Or do you, have you gotten into painting or anything, or you stick pretty much with this? Um, I, I dabble in painting, but this okay. is this is what I do. It's your main focus yeah. right yeah. now. And you've been successful. I mean, you're getting... Uh, uh, commission pieces and stuff like yeah. that and obviously you're, you're getting into awesome art shows there's this one in particular universal visions i have mm -hmm. happened to hear about yep absolutely <laughs> uh is there anything else you'd like to go and um, let, let, let me know oh, i also have the first um public uh, art sculpture in hanover oh really and that was unveiled uh i guess before christmas last year really yeah. and what was that of it's actually, it's kind of an infinity symbol. Okay. But it's based on um, uh, Hanover's agriculture and industrial background. Okay. So half of the parts are industrial parts that were donated and half of the parts were um, uh, agricultural parts that were donated from various people around Hanover. Okay. Now, I, as you're, you're going through your process, uh, do you notice a, or do you just stay, you know, slow and steady or do you like feverishly go and then take a break? Yes. Feverishly going. <laughs> no, on. All, all of the above. Oh, okay. And, okay. You know, some, some, some of the stuff is slow and steady work, but you know, then, you know, I start making something, and then, I, I figure out where another part's going to go, and I, I just kind of have to keep going. Right. Otherwise, right. you know, I might lose it. Do, I now, think I might lose it. <laughs> do, do you have all the pieces together before you assemble it, or you you find them as you do it? I, I do it as find them as I do it. Okay. And if I do have some together, um, before I do it, they usually get pushed off the table and. Okay. I usually end up finding something else. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, I, I know for myself personally, uh, I'm really looking forward to going and seeing the unveiling of Argon. Uh, that is going to be uh, um, a definitely a highlight of the show, I mm -hmm. believe. That'd be cool. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you very much. Thank buddy. you. I appreciate working with you. Thanks.
There, we'll take some more over there. Yep, all right, good job. Okay, stand back a little bit. All right. to Maple or Street. Really? Yes. On, on Duke? Yeah, oh from Market gosh. all the way down to Maple. Holy heck. Yeah. yeah. And, that is uh, awesome though. Looks like five blocks. Yeah. Thank Ooh. you, darling. Wow. Let's see, we got a thing for Carl Anderson tonight. Okay. Carl Anderson for Judge. Mm -hmm. We're well, hungry tomorrow after church, our church, at Bethel at 350 West Street. We're having an all-you-can-eat buffet oh, yeah? from one to three. That's going right in the calendar, yeah. <laughs> It's a unified relay that's going to run across the country to raise money for Special Olympics Incorporated. Wow. And we're going to raise $2,500 here? I'm going to raise $2,500, God's right. willing. And I'm we're going to help you. Well, thank I you. I said, and we're going to help you. Yep. Absolutely. Thank you. We have a cleanup at Bands Park on July 17th through the 19th, the Cadoras Creek cleanup this we year. We were talking about that this morning, wondering yes. if the Cadoras Creek cleanup was going to address the hillsides. Yes, that is what we do. I saw that online. <laughs> That is good. Big pile of bags from a cleanup. This is actually where I started my work in the city. Right here. We had our first Cadoras Creek Festival, Cadoras Fest, in 1999. And we saw how dirty the creek was and said we got to do something we've got this beautiful area here we've got to show have a festival and start drawing people's attention to clean in the creek uh, it's amazing what people are making out of different stuff in york yeah we re represent people making things from everything out of wood glass metal plastic copper acrylic art different types of wall art sculpture pieces car part pieces, a little bit of reclaimed everything. Cool. Is artist represented here. I'm Steve Billett, co-owner of Ironic in downtown York, Pennsylvania, and we're counting on Michael Halford to lead York City. Thanks, Steve. You're welcome. It's um, a wonderful thing, you know, you could tell you would be a great um, person in any position for the simple fact that here we are on a Saturday afternoon and you're out walking and greeting and meeting the community still, you know, seeking information, seeking concerns and all like that. And I've always seen that as one of your better qualities and all like that. Thank and you know, I always wish you the best. Appreciate it. And all like that. All right. Was I? I think I did okay. Okay. How many standing ovations do you need? Like, was there a standing ovation? <laughs> she was in the zone. I was man. in the zone. <laughs> Little Latino kid. And we were going and they thought a bottle, an old dirty bottle was gold. I mean, they were like, I found a bottle. I found a bottle. No. Can I get one? Put it in my bag. They were amazing. I don't know why it clogged up, but obviously there's a sewage leak from the bar. Uh, and it's so bad that it's flooded their entire bottom bar and it's going off yeah, into the stormwater drain which then leads into Cadoras yeah. Creek and that is highly illegal um, but they've got a company on site they're waiting for a pump truck to come and be able to pump this stuff out There's nothing that guy can do by himself so they're doing all the right things just sometimes you can't uh, stop an accident fast enough for nothing to get in but generally, if people are doing the right things, I'm more lenient with them and not just calling in to get them fined. Because getting people fined for an accident doesn't really do a lot. And so, you know, they're doing what they can to stop it. But yeah, you know, I get called into action at any time. You never know what's going to happen. You know, it's not just about showing up at a couple meetings a month and making laws. It's, it's about trying to fix problems. and I'm working for you morning, noon, and night. I'm not here to tell you what you need. I'm here to ask you what you need. I'm here to represent you. 
I'd like to do that for another four years. Please vote for me, Michael Helfrich, for York City Council on May 19th. Uh, the first piece here is uh, one called Cash Town Road. And uh, I came up with the uh, initial concept of the song a, a few years ago and uh, was written just on the guitar. But then, as uh, Alan and I generally do, I say, hey, Alan, I, I got this uh, this piece I want you to hear. And, and he, he liked it a lot, so he wrote this fiddle part to it. Um, Cash Town Road is kind of an instrumental piece that... Um, gives a feeling to when the people of Gettysburg first were notified of the uh, troops coming into uh, Gettysburg um, in 1863 in that July morning and uh, weren't really sure what was going to happen. So uh, this is kind of a, a piece that uh, captures that feeling, uh, we hope. This next song is uh, not song, it's a tune actually, there's no words to it. Um, this is called Jupiter's Arrival. And again, like many of our pieces, uh, started with a guitar riff and um, kind of came into its own uh, about a year and a half ago. And uh, since then, Alan and I have been uh, honing it and massaging it and making it better. And it's uh, coming out on our newest album. Um, this is a piece. Uh, it got its name by uh, kind of fashioned after the uh, famous engine that serviced the Union uh, Central Railroad and uh, back in the 1867, 66, when they were building it. And uh, it's called Jupiter's Arrival, named after that famous engine. <laughs>
This next piece is another cover tune. It is a James Taylor tune by the name of Sweet Baby James and is also part of the regular repertoire of Smith Allen and Friend. Works in the saddle and he sleeps in the canyons, waiting for summer as pastures to change. And as the moon rises, he sits by his fire, thinking about women and glasses of beer, closing his eyes. As a doggy, he's retired and sings out a song which is soft but it's clear. As if maybe someone could hear. So good night, good night, ladies. Rock goodbye, sweet baby James. December is covered with snow. So was the turnpike from Stockbridge to Boston. Though the Berkshires seem dreamlike on account of my frosting, ten miles behind me, ten thousand more to go. There's a song. Sing and they take to the highway A song that they sing when they take to the sea A song that they sing of their home in the sky Maybe you can believe it if it helps you to see Singing works just fine for me two of you, we actually have two whole band experiences represented here. That's true. Yes. <laughs> so what are the two different bands that you are customarily out there running around with? Well, there is the Susquehanna Travelers, which is the two of us plus two additional people. Uh, and then there is Smith, Allen, and Friend, which is a, a trio. So we are part of both of those, yes. And now the Susquehanna Travelers have a pretty special mission. They're not exactly your typical rock and roll bar band, are they? We are not a rock and roll bar band by any stretch of the imagination. We, are, uh, we actually are a Civil War band. We play Civil War music, mid-19th century music, and Irish music, some other American folk music. But our primary focus is Civil War era music. What made you decide, just out of curiosity, that was going to be your musical specialty? Um, well, I became a, a Civil War reenactor when my son became interested in it, so that I could do that with him. Dad of the Year Award. Um, I met some other players, and we formed a band. This was, this was before Kevin was part of the band. Okay. And we just started playing Civil War music. Initially, it was just for fun, and then we realized that we could do this on a broader scale, and we did. That's and amazing. And we've been doing that for almost 16 years. So now, where, then where did the trio come from? 
Well, um, <laughs> Alan and I met at a, a a barn jam back in Yeehaw. probably 2004-ish uh, at a place that I used to work at. Uh, and anyways, he came to this and we played and I heard him play and I liked his playing. So I gave him my card and said, hey, if you ever want to get together, give me a call. Well, a year and a half went by, and uh, I kind of figured <laughs> maybe he Musicians aren't known for their timeliness. Oh, I, I, I'm not the, yes, the promptest yeah. person in the world. <laughs> Alan is known for being late sometimes. <laughs> but uh, anyways, um, out of that came a, a trio of uh, one of the other guys in Susquehanna Travelers and myself and him. I'll make a long story short, they lost their guitar player. He liked my playing. I joined the band. And there it was. But there was always another outlet of music that I wanted to pursue, which was uh, singer-songwriter folk music of the 60s, mm. 70s, 80s. Uh, people that I grew up with uh, listening to from James Taylor, Crosby, Stills, and Nash. Uh, the music that you just can't help but sing along to. even right. you know, No the matter Eagles. who's looking, you just can't yeah. help it. So out of that, I you know probably two and a half years ago, maybe even more, I said to Alan, hey, I, let's try some pop music from that era. And we slowly put it together. And uh, now we've gotten to the point where we brought in a third member, uh, Dean Friend, which is his true last yeah. name. So Smith, <laughs> Allen, and Friend uh, doing all That's this stuff. Awesome. And, uh, you know, so now we're just building another uh, musical <laughs> project together. And it's just been a lot of fun. So... Um, Smith Allen and Friend is going to be featured down here at uh, Indian Steps. And uh, now that's a result of an album that you just put together. Yes, it is. Well, it actually started last summer when we got when Susquehanna Travelers got invited to play at a bluegrass <laughs> event that they were having there. You are we don't there. play bluegrass music, but a lot, <laughs> of the, a lot of the music that we play is actually the roots of traditional bluegrass mm -hmm. music. And so yeah. we went there and we played and we had a great time. Okay. And after we played, we went into the museum and mm. I had probably not been there in at least 20 years. And we went through the museum and we're walking around in the main room, which is called the Kiva, and looking yes. at all the artifacts and we're going, wow, the acoustics <laughs> in here are really acoustics interesting. acoustics in this Native American wouldn't, Kiva house. Who wouldn't knew? it be interesting to record in here? So we talked to Joy Howell, who's the curator, and she was very gracious and very helpful and uh, opened the museum on a day when it was normally closed and allowed us to come down and record in the museum. So a product wow. of this new CD is, a re is recordings from Indian Steps. And I That's liked amazing. it there because it was cool inside. Yes, it wasn't hot and I didn't sweat a lot. <laughs> so that was the main focus. The key so. to a good studio yeah. experience. Not really though, but uh, like Alan said, the acoustics were great. I thought, wow, this would be a great place to capture some, some of the tracks. So you recorded the whole album well, not really, because we had with our the four, two of the former players of Susquehanna Travelers who have since left the band and been replaced, we had recorded an EP, a six-song okay. CD, and we had always intended to expand that to a full CD. Uh, but when the new players came in, once we got them up to speed, we said, okay, it's time to now let them be recorded as well. So the first half of the CD really is the previous player. So this is really a transition CD for us. It will include performances by some of the old players and by also, uh, you know, also for, from the new players. So um, that new stuff is recorded at Indian Subs. The old stuff is from the previous CD, somewhat re-engineered, but so it's a, a transition CD for us. Wow. So what can people expect from this concert? Tell me about the concert that we're going to do to unveil this project. Well, uh, Susquehanna Traveler's performance will be a performance of the new CD. So that's, the that's uh, yeah. we decided well, after we recorded the the CD, uh, we said, well, wouldn't it be interesting to do a CD release concert at Indian Steps? So we talked to the folks again, and they were they were you know uh, enthusiastic about it. Uh, and then we said, well, what if we expanded that into like 
a concert, a big concert, and it became a music fest. Uh, wow. So it will be Susquehanna Travelers. It will be Smith, Allen, and Friend. Wonderful. It will be uh, a gentleman by the name of Bob Basogia, who is a, uh, a country singer. He sings with a, uh, a country band called Fast Lane, but he also does solo performances. Wonderful. It will include uh, Brahmi and Wick, who are local here. You may have heard them wow. out if you've been out. Uh, I think they played recently at Holy Hound, mm -hmm. uh, featuring mm -hmm. Brahmi LaGruda as vocalist. And then uh, the last performance Stu. will be by Stu Huggins. Uh, and Stu has been around in this area playing music for a very long time. Um, so it will be a full day of music. It'll be from one to five, so you can come all day and listen to wow. a wide variety of music, a lot of different performers, and hopefully we will you know, earn some money for the museum. That's what this is all about. It's a benefit for the museum. So you're actually raising money for the museum, which is really is a wonderfully little known venue for special events, festivals, music. It's a, it's a beautiful yeah. little place along the river. It's a very special place historically for Native American history um, and has a long history of being along the river there. Uh, goes, it was, I think it was first started being built in, in 1905. Wow. Uh, so it was, it's been around for a long time. It's a beautiful location. And it's a great place to come and spend a Sunday afternoon, which is what we're hoping everyone will come and do. Um, uh, th th there's a small admission price, $5 a person, which is not very much. Not at all. Because the, the museum it's doesn't... It's a dollar an hour for the there music. There you go. The, yeah. You can't beat that price. Uh, the museum does not get any kind of state or federal funding, so their entire wow. budget is based on wow. people giving money or events like this. So we just decided that we needed to help the museum. We will Amazing. also be donating CDs, or new CD, uh, to, the, uh, to the museum so that they can sell them. They make all the profit from selling the CDs. So nobody, all of the people that I mentioned are donating their time. This is all... Just That's amazing. to raise money for the museum. To and contribute to that space. What's really neat, too, is uh, Indian Steps is probably better known in uh, Lancaster and York, Adams County, as the site of the, there's an annual Indian powwow. Yeah. But if you're not into that, you probably might not know yeah. about it unless you're into the just York County history. So, um, it, like Alan said, it's just a wonderful place to be. Hopefully and, this uh, can bring some awareness to a real arts and culture destination that's wonderfully so. worth the day trip and, and worth exactly. traveling yeah, to go see so. for their exhibits, for the grounds, for the gardens. Mm -hmm. So we can work together and bring some, some awareness to that place. And, and the date is? The date is May 17th. That's a Sunday afternoon, middle of May, from 1 to 5 in the afternoon. We're hoping for wonderful weather. And uh, you all can come out and hear five hours or four hours of wonderful music. The next piece we're gonna play is a cover tune. It's a Simon and Garfunkel piece. I think you all recognize it. This is something that is um, a regular uh, part of the performance of Smith Allen and Friend, uh, who will also be playing at Indian Steps on the 17th. Um, and so um, we're just gonna proceed. I'm sure you will recognize it as the boxer. I am just a poor boy who my story seldom told. I have squandered my resistance for a pocket full of mumbles, such are promises. All lies and jest, still the man hears what he wants to hear and disregards the rest. I lie, lie, lie. I left my home and my family Was no more than a boy In the company of strangers In the quiet of the railway station Running scared Laying low, seeking out The poor quarters where the ragged people go Looking for the places only they would know Lie, lie I 
Asking only workmen's wages I come looking for a job But I get no offer Just to come on from the horse On 7th Avenue I do declare There were times when I was so lonesome I took some comfort there Lying in my life That I'm laying out in my winter clothes Wishing I was gone, going home Where the New York City winters are leading me Leading me In the clearing stands a boxer and a fighter by his trade As he carries a reminders for every glove and made Until he cried out in his anger and his shame I am leaving, I am leaving, but the fighter still remains So I'm here with Kiana Hornarman. Forgive me if I mispronounce that. No, it's okay. <laughs> and you are absolutely the diamond in the rough that I found out of everything. As I'm going through submissions, I come across what you're doing, and I found to be what you're doing so relevant to today's society. I said, I gotta get this girl, and I gotta get her as a featured artist, okay? So you're actually here, just completed your MFA over at Penn State, and you've been here for two years uh, from Iran. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, would you mind telling me uh, or telling everybody what your work's vocal, uh, vocal point is? Uh, uh, in general, my work is about my background and cultural identity. And you mentioned I'm from Iran. And we have to deal with a lot of issues, women's issues and uh, things like censorship and surveillance. So that is, those are the main focus in my work. Mm -hmm. And do you want me to specifically talk about certain pieces? You can talk about whatever you like. Um, when you talk about, you know, um, for yourself, your work would have to do a lot with uh, uh, the female uh, perception in Iranian and um, American cultures. How do you feel that it's perceived? Like, you know, well, badly, uh, you know, a roundabout? Well, um in general, being here, it's I, ha I always had to deal with mm, the Western perception of the Middle East and the Middle Eastern woman. Everybody ex expects if you're from the Middle East, you're dressed in a certain way or you do certain w things. So I was really interested in that and just trying to express that. And Okay. 
Okay, and now with this piece in back of us, would you just mind telling us a little bit about it? Mm -hmm. This uh, this piece is actually uh, a collaboration with a fellow artist, Cassie Beringer, and um, is a this is a part of a series that's called One Window is Enough for Me, and the focus of this series is a uh, mo is censorship and also just mostly female censorship. Okay. Because uh, in Iran, there's a lot of censorship going, and that's going on. Uh, government, our government censors everything. Um, and this is an Adam and Eve painting, and uh, I went over the painting, and it was actually a realistic painting, and I went, uh, went over the painting and with the Islamic geometric patterns, and also I cut through the painting, and so it's for me, growing up with those, that censorship, it was frustrating to deal with that, but I put myself on the other side, and I was the person who was censoring, and just to have to deal with that, putting myself in the position of the person I, that I always hated, in okay. a way. Now, do you consider yourself a religious person? No. No, not at all. <laughs> okay, uh, I was just curious, because is there a specific reason why you would choose Adam and Eve over uh, different uh, depictations from different uh, theologies? Uh, the Adam and Eve story was really interesting to me because it's a biblical story. It's also mentioned in the Quran. So I grew up. It's very <laughs> all encompassing, yes. right there. Yeah, yeah. No, that's great. Um, and now, uh, this is uh, Arabic writing around on the frame. This is actually Farsi or Persian. Okay. And it's um, a verse of a poem, which is actually the title of the whole series. One window is enough for me, and it's a poem from a feminist poet in Iran that talks about having or not having that one window, wanting a, just one window to be able to express herself okay. and see the world. Okay, and now for, for this show that's coming up, you're going to be doing something that I've never heard of in any show. <laughs> you're actually going to be segregating yourself from the show uh, uh, to, to put you and the, the viewer of what's what they're seeing uh, uh, in the same mindset, so to say. So your work's going to be on display. It's going to be there, and people will be able to see it, no problem. But there's going to be a veil up so that they'll actually have to physically walk through the veil and be separate from the rest of the show. Mm -hmm. uh, that is just a, a, such a dynamite idea. Now, where did you come up with this whole idea to go and separate, you know, your artwork and... Uh, uh, and the viewer, because it's such an absurd thing. Here, let me put out my art there and don't look at it. <laughs> you know, where did you come up with this idea? Uh, well, the idea came from the treatment of women in Iran's government because women have to cover their hair and body when they go outside. So I wanted to create a space like that is inside the house and outside. Okay. So the veil and the whole curtain is supposed to be that wall that that's or that door that separate the inside space and the space outside. And Absolutely. I, I, I just think for a, a philosophical idea, I mean, you nailed it. That is just fantastic. And I cannot wait to go and see it because I am sure it's going to just blow my mind. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so very much, much Karen. I look forward to seeing your work. All right, y'all, this is how I am. This is for all my musicians out here that work so hard to get their music played. You know what I mean? This is me speaking from the heart when I say a lot of things won't get aired when we work hard for it. So check it. Yo, this won't get aired. You gotta be kidding me. The rich spent a lot of time to try to get rid of me. Put me in this hell to take me out of society. I thought this was a free world, so why did you lie to me? Yo, this won't get aired. You gotta be kidding me. The rich spent a lot of time to try to get rid of me. Put me in this hell to take me out of society. I thought this was a free world, so why did you lie to me? Yo, this won't get aired. Strictly for my hip hop people. Yo, I'm an equal. They say I'm too old. I'm legal. Like Andy Glover, you busters don't know this eagle. Can me from a mile away and I don't need you I'm to the head with this shit, so just face it I'm great bitch and getting wasted, it's not what I'm facing My patience is thin from dealing with so much hatred My stuff is bad I got gas from y'all faking For spitting this I get hit by a Freemason The enemy would think I be dealing with my God graces My part one I was thinking your God made us But the root of all evil have betrayed us Damn, so when you rap about money and lust Why do you think it says in God we trust? But you're not hearing me I'm not with these thoughts on my mind For every verse I might be doing some time But yo, this won't get in you you gotta be kidding me The rich spent a lot of time to try to get rid of me Put me in the cell to take me out of society I thought this was a free will so why did you lie to me? Yo, this won't be an end I'm riding to get it The rich spent a lot of time to try to get rid of me Put me in the cell to take me out of society
out of society I'm talking about the free world I'm not the God of God I'm a sin away from hell And a blessing from heaven Right around with the beast Confessing to a reverend And my time was coming So I ain't stressed a second Or oh, regret the present Don't you dare second guess me Better learn a lesson We had it further and progressing Take the game over Give the world an impression First in the present They never heard an impression That we used to serve But we get no more protection you do what you love You gotta sacrifice the hate yeah. Magnify the snakes From the axes by the fake uh -huh. You could go through something They'll laugh right in your face Most of the time It's bad Cause you're next to wait You gotta look for home Before the sick is home Get a double Them bitches are triple cause I'm as sick as oil Since they was kids as boys uh -huh. Reminiscing I'm not kissing But it's all your hands You gotta be kidding me The rich spend a lot of time They try to be rid of me Put me in the cell Take me out of society I thought it was a free world So why did you lie to me Yo, this won't get hands You gotta be kidding me The rich spend a lot of time They try to get rid of me uh -huh. Put me in the cell Take me out of society yeah. I thought this was a free world So why did you lie to me That's it I really don't care if it do This is something to keep my black people out of the news Bodies on top of bodies Got us wearing the news That's a physical to the world Because we're locked in the room But still, I'm hearing people play the role as a hitman Shit, man, you had to sell your soul to a rich man I play like a puppet, but it's more like a slave To kill your brothers over boys and try to say that you paid Living in the world just to be dead or in jail Either way, they're getting richer while we're living in hell I'm not being controversial, this is only reality You're rather be poor as fuck instead of another man See now it's hard to find work And it's gonna get worse Look at the children and say what are they worth Church. My homie, get your mind right. Y'all people wasting time, and your time's up. Come on, you gotta be kidding me. The rich spend a lot of time trying to get rid of me. Put me in this gutter, take me out of society. I thought it was a dream, but they watched me battle. So they won't get married. You gotta be kidding me. The rich spend a lot of time trying to get rid of me. Put me in this gutter, take me out of society. And yo, it's Tell them what I'm here Bring that out. Yeah, it's Tell them what I'm here Bring that out. Yeah, it's Tell them what I'm here Bring that out. Thank <laughs> you.